Gentlemen and lady of the jury, welcome to tonight's debate on our topic, polygamy should be legal. You know, this has been a question that has haunted men and women ever since the beginning of time. What should be the arrangement? And then the other question is, what role should government play in helping society to arrange themselves in terms of husbands and wives and something like that? I want to start with a quote from an ancient Chinese philosopher by the name of Chen Ji who said, polygamy, he said, I think polygamy is wonderful. And I couldn't agree more. So right off the bat, we're in good shape. I want, we're going to define polygamy, first of all, as the following. Polygamy is either it's having plural wives or husbands. So it could be either that the man, the man has a lot of wives or that the woman has a lot of husbands. And it's really open to the choice of whoever the men and women that are involved, whatever they want. So that's what polygamy is. And to start at, at the current, I'm going to start with the analysis of the current system, which is monogamy. But the question really is, one of the questions is polygamy, is polygamy better than monogamy? The current system of monogamy is a failure, and we know this. We see people all over the place having unhappy marriages, broken marriages, divorces, and, and shooting each other and so on. They, all it that does is that they end up in divorce court and it makes the divorce lawyers rich. Here's an amazing but true statistic. 100% of marriages end in divorce or death. Right there, my friend, that's a good reason that monogamy is not a good system. <laughs> that's not working. Now, so, the other, the other basic fact is that people, there are people that want it. There are people that want to be involved in plural marriages, whether it's, they want to be the, the plural wife or the plural husband, some lucky lady, whatever it is. And if there weren't the demand for it, then it would just simply die out. No, it wouldn't even be an issue. We believe that the current system is broken and is a mess. And there's one other reason in particular, and that is this. If you're in a monogamous marriage, that means you've made a commitment, not just for the next five or ten years, but for your life to just be with this one person. And the fact is, people get sick of each other. People change because things change, situations change, life changes, and you get sick of somebody. And it, how, it's just not even logical that you could spend the rest of your life with the same person. Because sooner or later, you're just gonna, you, they're going to start getting on your nerves. They're going to either put on 60 or 70 pounds or whatever. They're, you know, their mind changes. They're, they start to get feeble. And then you start an argument, and you've got eight more arguments, and then they're all growing like plants, like corn stalks. And each of the arguments grows a little bit better. One day this argument grows bigger, and one day this argument grows bigger. And sooner or later, you've got like eight arguments that are huge. And if it were a water analogy, they're all, some of them are at the boiling point, and then it blows over, and you can't stand them. Imagine. If, if you were in a plural marriage and you've got, let's say, six wives, if you start getting in an argument with this one, you say, listen, honey, how about this? I'll see you next Tuesday, and, and we can hash it out then. But between now and then, I'm just going to talk with Sarah over here, one of my other wives, and, and go have a good time. I'll talk to you later. And then the beauty of it is that you both get to calm down. The time apart you use to reflect and relax and maybe see the other person's point of view, there's more variety, and the arguments don't get out of hand and out of control. Now, the, the, the opposition team will have to stand up here and tell you why polygamy should be illegal, and in particular, what, they're have, what they have to justify is why the government should make it illegal. And we believe that it is not the government's role to tell people how to live their lives. The government does not know what's better in this state or this state or this state. The government does not know what's better for me or for any of you in this room or anybody else in particular. They can make one uniform rule that they apply to everybody, but they don't know that that's any better. Not to mention, the, the people that run in Washington, how honest are they anyway? I mean, half of them are taking money under the table, or they've got, you know, affairs and skeletons in their closet. Say so Edgar Hoover stayed in power for 50 years because he had files with dirt on every politician in Washington, and they knew it, and they were afraid of him, and they knew that if they crossed him, he would just bring it. They would lose to the newspapers, and pretty soon they'd be involved in a scandal. The government is full of corrupt politicians, and there are no, no positions to dictate morality to the rest of us. And it's not the government's role. If we had a system of polygamy, either way, people would be more satisfied in their marriages, there would be fewer divorces, there would be fewer arguments, it could also be, you know, it's more flexible, it's a much more system, uh, flexible system. Another advantage is there are people who cannot find a mate, you know? I mean, for instance, you get to a woman that gets beyond, let's say, the age of 35 years old or something that wants to get married. There are just not that many opportunities if she wants to marry somebody that's roughly her own age. And I don't know why it is. It's just this. 
And then probably the same thing applies to men on the other hand, too. But the people who cannot find a mate are able to find a mate under the system of polygamy, where the government gets off the people's backs, out of the bedrooms, and out of our lives. Thank you.